Technology has forever changed modern warfare. And in the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, the U.S. military is in high-tech overdrive, driven from an unimpressive and dusty place seemingly in the middle of nowhere. At its home base at MacDill in Tampa, Central Command Headquarters is a rather imposing structure. Here in Doha, it is warehoused in warehouses. But it's what's inside that counts, of course. And inside is the most advanced telecommunications center I've ever seen. Here, American troops and civilians work side by side with coalition partners. This building monitors operations throughout Afghanistan and Iraq, on the ground and in the air. We can put our Hellfires like right where they need to be to avoid all kinds of collateral damage. Captain Lance Brockman explained to me how they can attack the enemy precisely thanks to satellite images or views transmitted back by unmanned aerial vehicles called predators. The remote controlled planes are flown by pilots on the ground. Uh, we can give our feed that we see on the screen down to uh, army troops or marine troops in contact through what we call a rover feed so they can get an over the hill kind of look, less fog of war for our guys so we have more uh, terrorist capturing capability and life saving capability. Capabilities that U.S. troops are helping Afghan and Iraqi troops to gain so that the Americans can come home. A 120 millimeter rocket uh, fired at us. Happens about once every week or two. Troops like Major Howard Hall, when not deployed, he reports to work at the Marine Corps Reserve Center on Gandhi Boulevard. I was embedded with Hall in Fallujah, site of the fiercest combat for the U.S. Marine Corps since Vietnam and the place where four American contractors were ambushed and killed in March 2004. Their mutilated bodies left hanging from this bridge. Today, Fallujah is much calmer, and the job here for Hall and his men is teaching combat operations to the 2nd Brigade of the Iraqi Intervention Forces. We're busy uh, almost around the clock with our counterparts, uh, training, coaching, mentoring, and that, that's a full-time job. <laughs> Military trainers like Hall say the hardest lesson to teach Afghan and Iraqi troops, many of whom are military veterans of the previous regimes, is that now they may and should show initiative. Independent actions, initiative, all these type of things that we thrive on, that was all punished in the former army. So while we have some very skilled, very talented young officers and non-commissioned officers, they've never been given the authority to take action on their own, to make decisions, or even to make suggestions to senior officers. This is my favorite meal over here, kebabs. It's a farewell feast, and the respect and camaraderie is obvious between Americans and Iraqis. Major Hall and his Marines are rotating back to the U.S., replaced by other American trainers. And while Hall and his men can't wait to get home, yes, but of course. others serving in Afghanistan and Iraq are glad to grab a mini vacation back at Forward Command in Doha. Our goal is to get them back into the fight, safe and sound out of here and relaxed and ready and ready to go. Few can leave their deployment to come all the way home to the States for a vacation, but a four-day stay in Qatar lets the troops breathe a little easier with all the modern conveniences of home and no MREs. Breakfast of champions, Bob. And that's not all. The theme here is treat them as heroes. And the troops get everything from movies and swimming pools, facials, and pedicures for the foot soldier. It's just a time away from everything where you just kick back and do nothing if you want. So. Do you look forward to it? Yeah, I was looking, I needed it. It was a good rest. A small escape from the realities of war before these men and women return to the front lines where the enemy vies for its next kill.